cell crawls. Now, first of all, why do cells crawl to a specific location? The short answer is this. Cells will preferentially crawl towards an extracellular matrix composition that they prefer, meaning they have integrins that bind to that particular composition better than they bind to the stuff behind it. So you can have an effect, a gradient here. Let's kind of do this. Okay, let's just say, um, we'll say specific Okay, As, let's say this is a, represents a specific molecule of the extracellular matrix. It can be any of a number of things. It could be a particular collagen. It could be a particular fibronectin. It might be a certain glycosaminoglycan. Whatever the case is, we can have a gradient where certain regions of the amber or certain areas have more of this stuff and other areas have less. So in a sense, let's kind of draw this over here where we have... Let's suppose we have it going up and up and up as we move further down the embryo. It reaches a peak and then it starts declining afterwards. Okay. Now, cells will move towards the area that has the extracellular matrix that reacts the strongest with whatever integrins they have. So, case in point, I'm going to draw a little scale over here. Let's suppose we've got a cell here. Here's a cell. And here's the nucleus. Okay, let's suppose we've got more of whatever we like over here and less over here. Okay, what's going to happen? Over here, more integrants are going to be binding to whatever they like because there's more of that composition here, whatever it is, whether it's a collagen or whatever the case is. So you get more integrin binding over in this end. You get less integrin binding over here because there's not as much of the stuff that their integrins bind to. So you have more binding here, less binding here. Now what's going to happen is when you bind to the integrins, of course, that stimulates things like the ras MAPK pathway. It stimulates things with the cytoskeleton, like formation of focal adhesions, generation of cell extensions, and the like. So if you have something here, you get more stimulation here, more integrant stimulation here, you're going to get more of a response here than you are at this end. So over here, this cell is going to preferentially make cell extensions in this direction. And you may make some more focal contacts or focal adhesions. Over here, you get fewer. And fewer focal contacts. So, if you happen to have effectively a trail of a particular extracellular matrix component, what's going to happen is the cell is going to be over here, and it's going to tend to crawl in the direction of whatever ECM it likes. It reaches up over here, and then anywhere it goes is going to give less stimulation to those integrins. So overall, it tends to stay in place. Now here again, this is kind of a, a, a semi-random kind of thing. It's more a statistical type of thing. Here's the cell. Over here, with more integrin stimulation here, you are more likely to get cell adhesion. I mean, you're more likely to get focal adhesion. You're more likely to get cell extensions over on this side of the cell. Over here, you'll get some, but not as much. So average out, you get more extensions and more movement in this direction. But it's kind of a semi-random thing. Well, let, let's just suppose an example here. In fact, since a couple of weeks going to ASB, this may be really very similar to what will actually happen after some of the sessions. This is kind of typical for ASBs, the pub crawl afterwards. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, let's suppose a bunch of us and a bunch of students are doing the ASB pub crawl, right? Okay. We hit one microbrew, and finally we say, okay, we've had enough of this IPA or whatever. All right, there's another one down the street. Okay, we've already had too much to begin with, but what's going to happen? We're attracted to that beer 
that new variety of microbrew right over here, but it's going to be a semi-random kind of movement. We're trying to go over there, but we're staggering around. <laughs> but overall, as we start staggering, we're preferentially heading towards yet some more beer, which at this point we probably do not need. And then finally you get to this place and settle down for a while because there's no more microbreweries around the area and we're about to pass out anyway. <laughs> okay, and likewise, if you're a cell and you've gotten to the area of the highest ECM composition that you're going to face, you're here. You will kind of stagger around a little bit, put cell extensions out here and here, but you get less stimulation than you do if you stay put. So it's kind of like staggering around the area of the highest ECM composition that you like. So we can get, we can set up effectively a molecular trail. So a cell can go up, reach a point of the greatest stimulation to its integrins, anywhere else is less <laughs> stimulation, so the, on the average it tends to stay put. It, that tells the cell it's time to settle down, not to move any further. Now, a different cell type may have a completely different prefer preference for ECM. You may have a cell over here that just can't stand this ECM in this area, but does like what's down here, and it can travel in that direction until it reaches the point where it settles down. So the same kind of ECM can form multiple molecular trails that are basically overlapping depending on what cell, what that cell's preference is. It's kind of like going out to sort of like Talladega National Forest or what have you. You will have Sometimes you have several trails merging to a single trail and they branch off later on. And you know, if you're trying to go on the blue trail versus the red trail, you may be coinciding with other people going on the other trail for a while, and then you diverge later on. So it's the same kind of thing. We can use the same section of clear, you know, forest or whatever to handle multiple different trails, multiple different paths. Same thing with this extra cell major. Each cell, depending on what integrins it has, is going to have its own particular preference, whatever stimulates those integrins the most. Uh, <coughs> now, a little more detailed view of the cell crawling. Here's our cell. Okay, the cell is going to be attached to the ECM at various points, these focal adhesions. And I'll just run some microfilaments into the interior. Okay, now there's lots of integrin, so lots of integrin stimulation over here. And much less down in this end. So we're going to get preferentially cell extensions. What's going to happen, of course, is we activate these G proteins, the row rack CDC42. A cell extension forms. It stretches out. As it forms, we can generate new focal contacts here that will help to anchor this into the deeper part of the cytoplasm. So the cell essentially reaches out, grabs out to the extracellular matrix, and sticks there. Now, over in this end, we can start breaking these things down. So remove these. And now a combination of sort of pulling into here, a pulling motion, and this is the cytoskeleton working once again, where you're out over here and start dragging the cytoplasm from behind into the front end of the cell, and then squeezing over here, so you form more microfilaments and sort of like a ring, and you squeeze a picture squeezing a water balloon at one end. So you squeeze here, push cytoplasm and organelles out over here. You're also pulling over here. And lo and behold, after a while, the entire cell has shifted its position 
more towards the front. And then this process repeats itself. So cell reaches out, grabs onto a surface, releases focal contacts in the behind, pulls itself in, squeezes itself in, releases, makes another cell extension, grabs onto the surface, and keeps on pulling in repeatedly. And then finally, when it reaches a point of the highest ECM composition that it likes, then it's just going to be, you know, sending out cell extensions randomly, but overall no net movement. Now, by the way, there's that classic YouTube video of me doing cell crawling on the desk. It's in the same thing as all I'd like to know and stuff. It's probably worth seeing, if not for the humor. It does also explain this with me acting as the cell and crawling along a set of desks to try to show the process. Yeah. But that's in like, it's in cell. If you did it in cell, not in this class. Oh, I've done it in this class, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. It's actually in the cell. Bi okay. It's probably in the cell biology. We just put it solder cell biology and we have that. Yeah, I've done that demonstration in this class, too. But I have a tendency of tearing my focal contacts off my shirt and then my wife has to put them back on again. <laughs> okay. All right. But basic idea of how cells crawl. That cell, and we see this all the time in development. The precursors of the... Nerve cells, what we call the neurites, the front end of it, which is going to become the future synapse, future synaptic uh, terminal. That crawls around, and then it reaches certain connections, certain parts of the brain, makes, uh, starts associating with other neurons and stuff, and you start to wire up the central nervous system. Also, cells in the immune system, like the macrophages, they do this kind of direct crawling, not so much from the extracellular matrix, but they also pick up and can detect things secreted by bacteria or bacterially infected cells or dead and dying cells, and then they can home in on that with a similar type of crawling movement. In this case, it's soluble molecules, they're stimulating it, but it's the same thing. They can detect the presence of these molecules and where the concentration is the highest, the same principles, they home in on it, and then they crawl to the infection site and start attacking it. So these kinds of movements are actually extremely important in cell biology, in health, in developmental biology. All right, so that kind of covers our extracellular matrix a little bit. Any questions on that before we move on to our next topic? All right.